Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Dick van Oeveren and in this third video of Aruba's dynamic segmentation series I will be covering the concepts around user-based tunneling and port-based tunneling. If you haven't seen the first two videos and want to know everything about user roles, click on the links that you see on the screen which will guide you to the videos that explain the concepts of user roles. Let me first go through the concept of colorless ports. The idea is actually really simple. So there are many devices that you can connect to a network. There are cameras, sensors, laptops, telephones, IoT devices and much more. Now the idea behind a colorless port is that it doesn't matter what and where you connect to the network. The role is assigned to the device based on the device identity and the role moves with the device. So this means for example if you have a client that connects to a switch on the second floor building one the role containing all the security enforcements will be applied to that user. So mind you it's not assigned to the port but it's assigned to the user. With dynamic segmentation you can have multiple devices connected to a single port where each device has its own user role assigned. Now when you move your device to a building, uh, to a switch in building 3 on the fourth floor, the user moves with that connection. And when you have configured downloadable user roles, all the enforcement takes place from ClearPass, meaning that you don't have to configure any user roles on the switches. And that's pretty cool and easy to maintain. Now we can use colorless ports with user-based tunneling and to a certain extent also with port-based tunneling. The real difference between the both are twofold. So first with port based tunneling the whole port is actually tunneled to a Aruba mobility controller. All the enforcement takes place on the Aruba mobility controller including the authentication, authorization and accounting. The switch is merely a tunnel endpoint tunneling all the traffic that ingresses the port. This is a really simple and easy setup, uh, easy to set up solution that still allows for using all the services that are provided by the Aruba mobility controllers. With port based tunneling there is no interaction between ClearPass and the switches. The switch really becomes an extension to the Aruba mobility controller. User based tunneling will take dynamic segmentation to the next stage. With user-based tunneling, the actual authentication authorization accounting takes place on the access port. In addition, you can have multiple devices connected to the same port, with each device being applied its own user role. This user role can be located on the switch, uh, which is the local user role, or the, lo or the user role can be downloaded from ClearPass. Let me show you how this works with user-based tunneling and downloadable user roles. When a device, say an IP phone, connects to port 1 of a switch, the authentication takes place and then the user role is applied to that device. In this example, the client does not establish a tunnel to a Aruba mobility controller. Now let's connect a second device to the same port. Authentication takes place. And in this situation we want the device to establish a tunnel to an Aruba mobility controller. Therefore a secondary user role is present in the user role that is pushed from ClearPass to the switch. This device will be connected through a layer 2 GRE tunnel to the Aruba mobility controller. Now this is a typical access port connection with user-based tunnel where an IP phone uh, with a PC connected to the IP phone is connected to the network. You would like the IP phone to keep the traffic local, so no tunnel established, and the PC tunneled to the mobility controller so that you can apply additional security functions for that client. Still, if you, have, if you want to have more devices connected to the same port, this is no problem at all. With the Aruba switches you can have up to 32 devices connected to a single port with each device having its own role enforcement. Uh, 
And as said, you can decide whether that device will be tunneled with user-based tunneling or whether the device has a local breakout. You can even mix user-based tunneling and port-based tunneling on the same switch. You can have both functions operational on the switch at the same time. Now how does this all work together? Well, sorry, you'll have to wait until the next video where I will be showing you all the high-level walkthroughs of the various scenarios with port-based and user-based tunneling, using local user roles and downloadable user roles. Again, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you liked it, a thumbs up would be nice. If you have any suggestions, ideas or questions, please let us know. And if you subscribe to this channel, you will be notified on any great new content that is added to this channel. So see you later and have a great day.